What's going on, everybody? This is Sean of Raw Select Music. Today, I want to talk about this album right here. This is Mind Design's Rare Pleasure, released on Stone's Throw on June 4th, 2021. After hearing the track, Hope You're Feeling Better, it quickly became one of my favorite songs of the year and made me extremely excited to hear what else he had in store on the rest of this album. And now that I've given it quite a few listens, I want to share my thoughts and opinions of this guy and let you know if it's worth checking out. So with that being said, yeah! Let's talk about this guy. If you were to only read Ringo Anchetta, aka Mind Design's bio on Stone's Throw's website, you'd be led to believe that he has one of the most insane stories in music history. Sadly, this turned out to be a clever ruse that he elaborated on in an interview for the Miami New Times, and as it turns out, his origin story is a lot less crazy. Born in San Diego to Filipino immigrants, raised in New Jersey, and currently residing in LA, he gained an interest in music, hip-hop, and b-boy culture from occasionally taking trips to Philly, feeling enlightened by attending mass at a black gospel church, and finally getting his hands dirty studying music at the Institute of Audio Research in Manhattan. In 2011, after moving to LA, he would really make a name for himself through his performances at the legendary Low End Theory, his own self-released beat tapes, and albums that he put out on labels such as Leaving Records, Fresh Selects, and of course, Stone's Throw, to which Rare Pleasures is now his third of official album on the label. With rare pleasure, according to a press release on Stone's Throw for the album, the beginnings of this album started back in 2018, with him wanting to make an album to bring together the different music that inspired him over the years. R&B, soundtrack music, psychedelia, and jazz, with them all being brought together under the concept of rare pleasure, which he describes as being the appreciation of sharing life, inward reflection, and the gift of joyful cathartic. To make this happen, he brought together an A-list group of musicians like Kiefer on piano, Suarvi on guitar, Carlos Nino on percussion, Miguel Atwood Ferguson on strings, and many, many more. Reviews, albeit not conveniently aggregated on Metacritic, all seem to be generally positive, with most outlets calling it a warm, effortlessly cool record, and all music being particularly positive towards the album in their review. But where do I stand in all of this? Personally, I absolutely love this record. I love the overall sound on here. I love the fact that Mind Design seems to be stretching out into like actual music territory. Not saying that I'm not a fan of his beat stuff, but I really love what he's doing with the seamless mixing of jazz, funk, pop, soul, and light psychedelia into a sound that's completely unique and completely inspired and original. On top of that, the musicianship, the arrangements, the melodies on here are absolutely fantastic. This has to be some of the catchiest music that I've heard this year. I absolutely love the fact that there's so many little earworms on here. Hope You're Doing Better is this almost throwback to a Beach Boys style track if it was more influenced by funk and hip hop. And I love Mind Design's lyrics on here as it tells a story about reaching out to a friend and checking up on them just to make sure that they haven't gone off the rails. And it comes off as very very earnest and completely genuine. As such, despite the, the sort of straightforwardness of the lyrics on here, it never feels too obvious and it never feels too corny. And as somebody who's really not a big lyrics guy, I really do appreciate that. And that sort of general theme of positivity and helping not only yourself and helping others pops up on multiple tracks on here, like on songs like Slow Dance and Masks, where he sort of talks about the same thing, about being more open and trying to help whoever he's directing this to towards a more positive feeling. And this is all anchored by some fantastic instrumentals like the slow groove that's on slow dance and medium rare. The spacey psychedelic atmospherics of a track like Masks, which then leads to one of my favorite late album highlights on here, Colors of the Sun, which seems to dip into 
almost Brazilian broken beat territory. And it's the type of exuberant, positive kinds of tracks that you can't help but feel extreme, extremely grateful to be alive while listening to it. It's one of my favorite tracks of the year, and I'm really glad that it recently got a music video. All that being said, I do have a quibble with this record, and that's the fact that there are so many interludes on this album. And not only are there these short snippet interludes littered throughout this record, four of them are just variations on the same melodies, and that's the Rare Pleasures track, which pops up, which pops up throughout the album. Now, I kind of get the sense that they're used as a way of thematically tying the album together, which is fine on paper, but I just get this overall sense of deja vu as I listen to this record, and I keep hearing the same melody over and over just with new elements added in to keep it from sounding like it's the same track. So I feel like it probably would have just worked better to have maybe just one of these interludes. It works as a great opener, but as it's littered throughout the album, it just doesn't really do anything to enhance the listening experience as far as I'm concerned. Maybe it would have worked better as just the intro. Also, it might have worked better if all these ideas were combined into one epic track. I guess all I'm saying is, as it stands, I do not like the way that these are sequenced throughout the album. It kind of throws off the flow for me. As well as the second track on here, Truth, which has this absolutely banging groove, but the song's only a minute long. And just the, the energy and vibe from this track makes me wish that it was way longer. And the brilliance of the arrangement and the melody on this song really makes it feel like it's kind of a waste to just leave it to a minute snippet. It's one of the most frustrating songs on here, and I kind of wish that it would either be expanded out to the length of a full song or just left off entirely, because I really don't like being tantalized with a song that doesn't pop up as a fully formed song later in the album. But all that being said, I absolutely love this album. I think that it contains some of my favorite songs of the year. And not only that, I think this is some of the best music that Stone's Throw has put out in a long time. So with all that being said, guys, to decide with all my complaints, this album gets one of my highest recommendations. If you haven't listened to it yet, make sure you check it out. And here's hoping that Mind Design continues to make more music in this vein, because it's very promising. And I love what he's doing on here. So yeah, if you haven't checked out Mind Design's Rare Pleasure, make sure you give this a lesson, because this is definitely some of the best music you're going to hear this year. So that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks as always for watching. If you've listened to this record for yourself, please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. If you want to hear this record for yourself, please make sure you head over to my WordPress blog because that's where I post music links to any of the records that I talk about on this channel. And make sure you're here for Live from the Record Room, my weekly live streams where I play records like the ones that I talk about in these videos, as well as a whole host of records in my collection that I don't get a chance to talk about on this channel. Links to everything, as always, down in the description. That's that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thanks as always for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, peace out!